What's up, peers, and welcome back to the World Crypto Network, continuing our reading of the Bitcoin DAF mailing list, including the Taproot proposal uh, that we now here have uh, by the chief wizard, Peter Woolley. Uh, who is telling us a bit more about the three different BIPs that he has. BIP Schnorr, uh, BIP Taproot, and BIP Tabscript. And of course, many have contributed to this awesome uh, project here. And we have talked a lot about Schnorr signatures in our already very long playlist, uh, also including some Bitcoin Optech newsletters where the topic has been covered. Uh, Piers, this is very important that you stay up to date uh, with all the current and future upcoming proposal changes uh, on the soft fork, software, or consensus layer. Uh, so be sure uh, to accumulate all this knowledge. We've already talked about the introduction to this and the description with the, the specific design decisions. Uh, and in a very technical video, then talked about the specifications of the verification, batch verification, and signing uh, with uh, including some optimizations for the near future. This was a rather technical uh, talk yesterday, uh, and good that you stick through this and now are here today uh, to, to learn more about the applications that we can have with Schnorr signatures, including, but not limited to, multi-signatures and threshold signatures, adapter signatures, and blind signatures. And we have some of that already in the wild, but let's right jump back into the reading. These are several interesting applications beyond simple signatures. While recent academic papers claim that they are also possible with ECDSA, consensus support for Schnorr signature verification would significantly simplify the construction. Yes, we can do multi-party and threshold signatures with ECDSA, but they are, as the entire ECDSA scheme is, rather a kind of hack around it. Uh, with Schnorr signature just being the intuitive and the quote unquote trivial way of, or of achieving the same goals. And again, with all the benefits that we have discussed on previously, including but definitely not limited to actual security proofs and much more efficient and data size wise smaller transaction and signatures. So uh, getting right into the multi signatures and threshold signatures. By means of an interactive scheme such as MUSIC, participants can produce a combined public key which they can jointly sign for. Okay, uh, So each participant has their own unique individual private key and they can compute their individual public key. But then they can also combine their individual public keys uh, in an aggregated public key. And then they can also, with their individual signature or private keys, produce valid individual signatures. And when that signature is over the same message, they can aggregate the signature uh, so that it will represent the aggregated public key, which is very nice. Read the music paper. For this allows N of N multi-signatures, which uh, from a verifications perspective, a verifier's perspective, are no different from ordinary signatures, given improved privacy and efficiency versus check multisig or other means. So that's what I talked about a bit previously. Right? With check multisig, what you have is on the blockchain, you put within the transaction and the reference to it in the script, uh, you put all of the public keys and you specify a threshold that has to be reached in order to spend that UTXO. But that verification and that enforcement of the threshold is not done cryptographically, but rather it is done via the consensus mechanism of full nodes, verifying every transaction on the blockchain. What we can achieve with Genoa signatures and the MUSIC protocol is that we can cryptographically aggregate public keys in a N of N multi-signature scheme. Uh, and we can cryptographically prove that to this aggregated public key, a signature can only be valid if all N of the N private keys have signed uh, this same message. Uh, and this is something that is a much stronger multi-signature, uh, also on a, on a conceptual, economical, praxeological level, uh, but it's also greatly improves the efficiency and privacy uh, of regular check multi-sig on-chain uh, node verification. Uh, so this is a very, very important change. And again, my, my entire bachelor thesis uh, covers these different topics right here. 
Further, by combining Schnorr signatures with Patterson secret sharing, it is possible to obtain an interactive threshold signature scheme that ensures that signers can only be produced, uh, sorry, that signatures can only be produced by arbitrary put predetermined sets of signers. For example, K of N threshold signatures can be realized this way. Uh, so what he's talking about here is that with some additional secret sharing, uh, we can specify a set of individuals uh, that a threshold of them is sufficient. Uh, so for example, if we have Alice, Bob, Charlie, David, and, uh, and Eli, right, then these are four, five peers, and we have five of their public keys. And we could aggregate five of these public keys into one aggregated public key, that is the music public key, which represents a N of N. So all five of the five keys have to sign the same message in order to produce the aggregated uh, signature that is valid to the aggregated public key. But we can step this up one further. And with some secret sharing, we can say that, for example, even if only Alice, Bob, and Charlie sign this message, uh, then it is spendable again. They can produce a valid signature, which is valid to this aggregated public key. Uh, and then the, you could also say, but for example, if Alice and David, only those two people, if those two sign, then we can also have a valid signature. Uh, or you can say it's uh, Charlie, David, and Eli, uh, these three people, they can produce a valid signature as well. And you can specify all of the different nuances and combinations of the possible peers that can produce a valid signature for that given aggregate public key. And in this way, we can have K of N threshold signatures, which is really, really cool uh, in the sense that it is, again, cryptographically enforced and no longer enforced on the network consensus layer. Furthermore, it is possible to replace the combination of participant keys in the scheme with music, though the security of that combination still needs analysis. So that is the really cool thing. We can add new peers to the threshold with music if everyone agrees. So if all five of Alice, Bob, Charlie, David, Eli agree that they want to put Freddy within their group as well, then they can all sign uh, or, or sign with their keys and include this new public key in their threshold scheme, uh, which is really, really cool uh, and especially very helpful for stuff like uh, MAST uh, or, or especially Graftwood. Um, but that is some, some different use case. And again, security of all this advanced stuff still needs to be uh, further analyzed. So another really cool and major use case is adapter signatures uh, used for scriptless scripts. Uh, so adapter signatures can be produced by a signer by offering his public nonce with a known point T uh, equals, so T is that point and lowercase t times g, so the nonce and the nonce commitment, uh, but to offset his secret nonce. A correct signature uh, or a partial signature as individual signers and contributions to a multi-signatures are called on the same message with the same nonce will be equal to the adapter signature offset by t, meaning that learning t is equivalent to learning a correct signature. Uh, so this is really cool, right? With this additional commitment here, uh, the, uh, the adapter signature, uh, we can uh, offset the public nonce uh, just by this one point. Uh, and this means then that by just requiring the, so to say, private key, this lowercase t of the public point t, uh, we can then, this is somewhat of a correct signature or equivalent to this can be used to enable atomic swaps or even general payment channels in which the atomicity of disjoint transactions is ensured using the signatures themselves rather than the Bitcoin script support. The resoluting transactions will appear to verify to be no different from ordinary signer, single signer transaction, except perhaps for the inclusion of lock time and refund logic. Uh, so this is the very cool thing, right? For example, for Atomic Swap, where we have Lightning Network funds that want to be swapped back on chain, 
usually we include a hashed time locked contract where if you reveal the secret uh, the hash or the, the hash pre image uh, you can refi or you can get these coins and you can spend them uh, in a transaction uh, and you can do so with only the uh, this hash pre image maybe a signature on top uh, and after a certain time uh, another condition kicks in and uh, another user or another script can release these Bitcoin out of that uh, UTXO and create a new UTXO with that. Uh, and the cool thing is, or so the bad thing with the old scheme is, as it's currently implemented, is that you have a separate hash and hash pre-image that you have to commit to on chain. And thus, it decreases the anonymity set, right? All of a sudden, it's clear that you're using a hash time lock contract. For example, for submarine swaps or for other swaps like coin swaps on chain uh, for enhanced privacy or lightning network openings and uh, uh, hashed uh, or well and, and routes. So the cool thing with adapter signatures is that you can somewhat hide this T uh, or yeah, so you can hide that you are actually not just transferring uh, the, so you're transferring the small, small case T, the so to say private key, uh, the hash pre-image, so to say, right? But it's, it's, it's not a hash, it's actually elliptical curve uh, computation, similar to private public keys. Uh, so this would be the private hash pre-image, right? The private secret. And T is the commitment to that secret, the public key, so to say. And what you here do is that you reveal the, so to say, private part, right? You reveal the hash pre-image, uh, the lowercase T here. And with that, then uh, you, you can actually, like it, it kind of counts as a signature because now you can produce a signature uh, and therefore uh, you can release these, uh, the coins out of that UTXO and spent them. Uh, so it has the same effect as HTLCs, but it is hidden within the regular signature uh, and public key of a regular Schnorr signature. And for the verifier, it looks indistinguishable from any other single signature or music uh, for that matter, or threshold sync. Uh, so again, the, the, the power of this is, is unbelievably great. Adapter signatures beyond the efficiency and privacy benefits of encoding the script semantics into constant sized signatures have additional benefits over traditional hash based payment channels. Specifically, the secret value T may be re blinded between hops, allowing long chains of transactions to be made atomic while even the participants cannot identify which transactions are part of the chain. Also, because the secret values are chosen at signing time rather than at key generation time, existing outputs may be repurposed for different applications without recourse to the blockchain even multiple times which is so much to unpack here again, right? With the hash pre-image, especially in a Lightning Network routed transaction, every single hop has the same hash and the same hash pre-image. So anyone in the route uh, can at settle point uh, see the, the full hash pre-image, right? And thus we can identify which peers have collaborated in this route. And thus we can somewhat see where the transaction was going to, right? But with adapter signatures, we can hide the hash and the hash pre-image within the signature here with the elliptical curve calculation of the secret and the public representation. And that is added on. Uh, it's being, off, or the public nonce is being offset it here uh, with, this no, with this point. And we can somewhat hide within the regular signature that is indistinguishable from any other signature. Uh, we can hide the different uh, types of, uh, of secrets that are needed for this one route. So different secrets, so to say, within the same signature. Uh, and this means that the individual peers of the route now have different secrets each, and they do not, or they cannot identify each other just based on the fact that they have the same secret, right? Because now everyone has a different secret, which is much better for privacy, also between the routing peers that you have. Uh, and of course, against any adversary that compromises these routing peers. Uh, and you choose these secret value, the, the lowercase t, you choose that at signing time um, rather than at key generation and, and opening time, right? Uh, so these existing outputs may be repurposed 
for different applications without recourse to the blockchain, even multiple times. So you can use the same secrets uh, or, or sorry, the same outputs for different uh, smart contract applications, uh, which is again, uh, quite a, a great improvement. Okay. Uh, and the last use case that is outlined here, blind signatures. Schnorr signatures admit a very simple blind signature construction, which is a signature that a signer produces at time behest to another party without learning what he has signed. These can, for example, be used in partially blind atomic swaps, a construction to enable transactions of coins mediated by an untrusted escrow agent without concerns that the transaction in the public blockchain transaction uh, graph. Okay, so very nice here to unpack. Uh, Schnorr has this property of blind signatures, which basically means you put the message into a envelope, right? You, you, you blind the message itself and you give only the envelope to the, uh, to the signer, right? The person who, who should make that blind signature. And then he signs the envelope, so to say, right? This blinded message. And he returns to you the signed blinded message, right? The signed envelope. And then you yourself can unblind this signed blinded message, right? You can get the original message out of the envelope. You break the envelope again. And then out of the magic of, crypt of cryptography, on the message that you take out, you now have a valid signature of the signer. So you have a valid signature on the message without the signer knowing what message he has actually signed. Right? He's only signed the envelope, but magically the, the signature has been like moved transparently to the message as well uh, without the signer knowing what he has signed. And so, for example, he, Peter points out the use for partially blind atomic swaps where you have a centralized but untrusted escrow agent. Right? And the escrow himself cannot... Uh, cannot connect the transactions uh, that you are or that he is signing or, or co-signing, uh, which is so, uh, somewhat different in this example that he brings out, uh, but it is already blind Schnorr signatures are already used by the Wasabi wallet, right? And they use this to communicate the inputs or and especially the outputs of the equal value coin join denomination that will be generated. And the coordinator signs the blinded output of the coin join. Uh, and th this signed output then is used at a later point in time uh, to prove that the input and the output actually here are of within the same transaction and only used once, but the, as, uh, the, the central party, the coordinator, cannot de-anonymize which inputs uh, have quote unquote funded which outputs. Uh, so this is this is very useful and again already implemented in Bitcoin in the Wasabi wallet. Okay, not on consensus level, but already on user application level of the stack. While the traditional Schnorr blind signatures are vulnerable to Wagner's attack, there are a number of mitigations which allow them to be usable in practice without any known attacks. Nevertheless, more analysis is required to be confident about the security of the blind signature scheme. And again, there is this attack vector, right? Wagner's attack. But there are several ways of mitigating these or this attack. And these precautions have been, for example, taken by the Wasabi team. And so this is a known attack and there are ways of defending against it, which make then Schnorr signatures really compatible for many blind signature use cases including but definitely not limited to uh, zero link coin joins. Uh, but of course, also here, uh, atomic swaps uh, of on-chain to off-chain funds or coin swaps uh, from on-chain to on-chain a couple blocks later uh, is all the stuff that is now possible, which is very, very cool. And uh, last for today, test vectors and reference code. For development and testing purposes, we provide a collection of tests vectors in the CSV format and a naive but highly inefficient uh, and non-constant time, pure Python uh, 3.7 reference implementation of the signing and verification algorithm. The reference implementation is for demonstration purposes only and not to be used in production environments. 
Uh, and so this is, of course, the always important uh, caveat here that this is early, early, early draft proposal alpha, not even alpha software, right? testing stuff. And so we are still far, far away from having a the real implementation ready on, on a consensus level. Uh, but it is good to know that many smart minds are already working on this. Uh, of course, including Peter Woolley, but not limited to him with many others uh, like Jonas Nick, like Tim Ruffings, like Gregory Maxwell, uh, many, many others uh, that are working on this very compelling problem. Uh, so Piers, this was the Schnorbit in all its glories. Uh, so let's go through the acknowledgements. This document is a result of many discussions around the Schnorr-based signatures over the years and had inputs from Jonas Lau, Gregory Maxwell, Jonas Nick, Andrew Polstra, Tim Ruffing, Rusty Roselle, and Anthony Towns. So again, all these peers, thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for sticking your heads together and, and somehow figuring out how we can make uh, Schnorr signatures happen in Bitcoin uh, because it has a lot of great use cases and potential, but we also have to be very sure that we have implemented it correctly. For example, a naive implementation of Musik leaks the private keys. Like that's a fact. Thus, we need to be careful with how we implement this stuff. And these are only the known problems of Schnorr signatures. There are probably many, many unknown unknowns that we also have to take into account. So rigorous peer review is absolutely vitally important. Uh, and thank you very much to all the contributors uh, to specifically the Schnorr bit, but in general, uh, to all the implementations of Schnorr and to all the consensus layer changes to Bitcoin in general. Uh, so thank you very much to all the core contributors uh, and thank you for also making sure that we have cutting edge software available here. Uh, this is a no bullshit zone. This is actually high uh, financial risk software. Uh, so good that we have smart people working on this. Uh, Pierce, this was the reading of the Schnorr signature for SECP256K1, the Schnorr bit as it has no number for now. I mean, author Peter Woolley, uh, but again, many people have worked on this. Uh, so now we have finished one of the three papers that are included, or BIPs, sorry, that are included in the Taproot proposal. And we will continue our conversation uh, about Taproot specifically and TapScript uh, in the following uh, shows. So these are all three different BIPs, uh, somewhat the same length uh, of the Schnorr BIP. Uh, that explain how exactly we can use this awesome software. Piers, again, this is only part of the already huge playlist that we have for Schnorr signatures. So get educated about the beauties of Schnorr signatures and really make sure that you understand the, the magic of all this because it is coming to Bitcoin and we will have to uh, know which software we are running on our own full notes and uh, what to verify. So get educated about all this. It's very beautiful software. And if you have a question, you can call the HODL hotline uh, to make sure that uh, uh, you have the time to sit down with one of our teachers here uh, to answer some of these questions that you have. Again, very complex stuff, so HODL hotline is the place to ask your questions. Uh, and I also want to shout out to all the Bitcoin events that I will be going to and speaking about all this magic stuff happening in Bitcoin. Uh, and if you like to support me on the struggle here uh, to bring high quality Bitcoin knowledge to everyone uh, in a free and Libre open forum, uh, please consider contributing to the Tallycoin here on the right side with Bitcoin or Lightning Network uh, transactions uh, to get some new microphones uh, for uh, recording specifically interviews at these very important events. For example, right, that included the interview with Jonas Nick, one of the main contributors to the Schnorbit. Uh, and he has answered many great questions in this hour and 10 uh, minute long video that will explain a lot of the basics of Schnorr. Uh, and again, much more is covered than in this playlist as well. Uh, so Piers, thank you very much as always for joining me here on the World Crypto Network and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.